Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Justin. I'm Gabe. You're watching episode 123 of Dang It Podcast. This episode, 123. 123. <sighs> so, so this is the first time we've had a you and I podcast in, in a, a long, long time. Yeah. there. It's strange because we definitely had like two people on a podcast before, like recently. Uh, I forget who. I think maybe it was Nolan. Might have been Nolan. Yeah. Otherwise, like, yeah, it's been a while since it's just been you and I. It definitely tells because, like, we created this this big space right here for whatever. I kind of did it because just for balance sake. Fuck the balance. What, you know what? Then I'll sit here. So in this episode, <laughs> <laughs> this episode, uh, we're not really talking too much about different things. I feel like I had some stuff, but it's been kind of, like, blurred with all these things that have just happened recently. I guess I could really talk about that. So um, earlier today... Uh, David, Steven, and I, uh, sat down and did a collab video with, uh, Merrick again, Merrick Lakey. Uh, we were talking about, uh, well, he was actually kind of like this guy who would give us quizzes. So for our video that we posted later, it'd be an anime quiz in which he asked us a whole bunch of trivia questions about various anime and stuff like that. And, uh, I think overall we all did poorly on that, <laughs> but hey, it was scaled. Anyway, there was a winner for that. Uh, also on Merrick's channel, uh, he did a quiz regarding hentai. So that was um, uncomfortable, but it was definitely an experience nonetheless. So that's how, did, gonna... how did Steven do? Oddly enough, so and so, like all of us actually, just so and so. Like, like we all did pretty bad on it, but otherwise, if you scale it, so and so. But yeah, and so we did that. It, again, definitely experience. It was kind of weird, but it was always a pleasure to do a collaboration. I got to really reach out and do other ones with other people. The problem is that I don't know anyone in the area, no YouTubers in the area, and I'm not really particularly close in touch with anyone. I'm pretty sure like when reacting was around, we could have like collabed with any kind of reactor. I'm pretty sure that'd be pretty easy if we just drive out to, say, LA or something. <sighs> that'd have been a drive, though. I, yeah, yeah, it would. So it would definitely be devotion. I was always thinking that we should try to go to the uh, YouTube space. We do have enough subscribers to you know go there and film over there. Do we really? Yeah. What's it's, the prerequisite? It's like ten thousand subscribers. Oh, dude, we could lose like nine, like ninety percent of our <laughs> people and still be able to go. Right. Cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we're gonna go in there. We're like, hey guys, I'm like who? Ooh, dang productions. I could have sworn I've heard about you guys. Something happened in February, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, we, we've been keeping an eye on your numbers. It looks like you're having a real steady decline, so there's the door. <laughs> this is for aspiring YouTubers. <laughs> it's like, it's one of the reactors on, on YouTube. I say, hey guys, do you think you can help me? And they're like... <laughs> But yeah, it's whatever. We're, we're, we're steadily working on that. Um, I did definitely want to do some skip filming with David as well as you guys, but, mm -hmm. um, as far as like tomorrow, I'd only have in, in mind like the ways you try to convince me to do all you can eat sushi, but that's it. <laughs> I don't know. I've been not so motivated to do skits for a while. I think I've just been trying to keep up with my schedule. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, know. uh, the other day, I came up with a really good idea for a skit. Okay. It is a infomercial about how to better watch infomercials. Premise is, is watching infomercials just too hard these days? <laughs> yeah. And from there, we have an infomercial about infomercials. Right. <laughs> Introducing. Also, um... Mainly because I want to do stupid infomercial shit where it's like you struggling to do the most mundane task... Yeah. Is opening, is brushing your teeth just too hard? <laughs> just freaking people squeezing the shit out of the tube like, I can't. I can't. Help. Mom, help. <laughs> and also, I was thinking about like my mindset whenever I create like skits. And I feel like I have like this routine where I just, I think this way when I develop like a script or something like that. And uh -huh. I've been thinking about trying to like go back to basics. Like, Which was? Like, no, Not just like no, us. No storyboard, just idea. Just an idea. 
like something very simple and how you can elaborate it into being something really funny because a lot of I would say a lot of funny things I find nowadays are really simple things. Mm-hmm. Malk. Like Malk, for example. Something like super simple like that. Or uh, physical comedy. It's always the best one. I could always buy cream pies and throw them at your face and just laugh. <laughs> but you have to end it with a dry laugh. A really dry laugh. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do that? I don't know. I to this day can't do that no matter how hard I try. I'm making this skit on my dry laugh. <laughs> I'm going to see how long I can go for. Just try to get every single bit of laugh out there. <laughs> Something like that. I have to like, I really have to get into it. Otherwise I can't really fake it. One man, <laughs> I'm just getting your reaction on that. Oh shoot, no, I I thought about something. Um, I forget what it was. Oh yeah, uh, when we stopped uh, Tokyo Mirage sessions, there was a there was a person who said like, "Oh, it's a shame. Like, what happened to them? Because I really liked them." And I was like, "Oh, uh, what'd you like about them?" It's like, "Oh, it's just just kind of like how the way you reacted." And I suddenly started to shudder a little bit, like react. <laughs> I like how it's like PTSD for you at this point with the term react. It's like I can't escape it. TM. To be honest, though, like a lot of our stuff is reaction based, whether it be like dang it plays or whatever. Nowadays, most things are reaction based. Yeah, so I think working with skits will definitely change it up a little bit. Plus, I I do want to get back into. It. I just need more ideas. I need to really draw from more basic. Um, Ideas instead of like trying to build up something way too complicated. Instead of like trying to make references here, they just find something that's funny. So see if we can I'm fairly it. certain that based off of the way that this is facing that way, I'm just kind of like boring myself into the viewer's right ear if they're listening in headphones. Uh, I'm getting the exact same idea too. Yeah, I'm just like I'm here. It's it's strange because like um I would normally go for like the um what was it called? Uh Yeah, the one where it was fucking all around. The right, omnidirectional. The omnidirectional. And then there was another one that's like completely direct. There was omnidirectional, cardioid, dual, and now we're doing stereo. Okay, it's cardioid that I was talking about. Uh-huh. I initially had it for cardio just to avoid all this space here, but then it definitely had a hard time catching our voices, like, from here, because we'd have so many people. Yeah. And so stereo, like, completely fixed that. Yeah. Because you have, a, uh, as far as I know, it's there's like, there's three main mics on here, mm-hmm. and then one secondary mic. So you have the uh, the three, which is front, left, and right mm-hmm. as the main ones, and then you have a back one that's a secondary mic. Right. Okay. Yeah. Definitely the Blue Yeti mic here is uh, definitely useful. Um don't think you guys can see it anymore. Kind of good thing, but also, like, it's whatever. But yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you're like... Whoa. Yeah, I thought I thought they should get a little shake out of it. Holy crap. <laughs> it's like shaking a goddamn baby. I can't. I can't do it. I can't. I'm getting flashbacks of Sonic Adventure 2 when you say, I can't. But, uh, yeah. We actually, we, uh, last... Last weekend we uh, finished Sonic Adventure 2, so I think we're moving on to our next thing. Definitely uh, waiting for uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon so we can do like a Nuzlocke run of that. I just don't have any capture cards for the 3DS. And what I've heard so far, I could spend the money on it, but like I've been hearing things about it being like really unreliable nowadays. So I'm like, you're just unreliable. I am. Don't harass me like that. All right, so. <laughs> So, looking at your shirt, are you excited for Gears 4? I am, but at the same time, like, I don't know. Like, I'm not as big of a fan as, like, my brother was. And my brother's just like, I'm not so sure if I want to get it. Because, like, we share our uh, games. Yeah. So, so it kind of depends on them. Otherwise, like, I can't really go around buying new things and not be able to play it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm trying to, like, finish up, like, what I already have. So, I'm still working on Witcher 3. I'm probably some other Xbox One game like Tomb Raider. I gotta I'm, finish this. Dude, I'm like so at the point where I'm like, I really want to play Tomb Raider, but I can't because... I can't. Sorry. Because <laughs> we said that we we're going to have Ryan to do the Let's Play for it. 
And I kind of want the whole story to, for the most part, be new to me. I've played yeah. the first one already. I've, like, almost beaten it. What, uh, Rise back, of Tomb Raider? Like, yeah, like, years ago, back in high school when it first came out. Oh. And so I don't remember the full story. I just remember uh, she's exploring the waters of some far-off country. She's looking for an island to, like, study the indigenous people. They get shipwrecked, and then the indigenous take her sister and everyone else and then they try and rape her sister and then yeah yeah that typical stuff when you go typical Tomb Raider things right when you're rape and pipes through the bottom of your skull yeah yeah exactly mm-hmm. Just don't, typical typical dude I think that was the one thing I hated about that damn game was the death scenes it was just die please don't struggle it makes it so much worse Man, I remember hearing an interview with the voice actress and how she had to record every single death scene mm-hmm. in which she has to like, like utter like noises, in which how she Do dies. The and the gargles. Yeah. Especially like the impalements here. Like, oh God, how do you. Dude, no. the worst one was uh, like, there's scene, there's moments in the game where you kind of like fall and you're sliding down a thing, or like a ramp, or you're being washed away mm-hmm. in rapids. And they have to make it a little more interactive, so you have to, like, dodge rocks, dodge debris and all that. Thing is, if you hit the debris, every time you hit the debris, you die. And it's not a normal, like, oh, bleh, I'm dead. It's, no. There's a freaking, like, six-foot piece of rebar going through the bottom of your chin and out the back of your skull. And you're just like this, like, trying to fight it out and then die. Ah. Uh. Can never be as lucky as that one dude who actually had something like that through his head, but lived. Got no, whatever that was as nothing on the dude who had a um, a freaking industrial bore go through his eye socket. Eye socket. Yeah, like those big old drills that they use, they used to like drill through concrete. Mm-hmm. He had one of those. It was about that. I think it was like that big in diameter, like three, two, like oh. two, two and a half inches. Oh God! And it went through. Like, right underneath his eye socket, and then out the back of his skull. Man! And he was stuck in, like, a push-up position for two and a half hours while they tried to figure out <laughs> how to get it how to get it out without killing him. That's gotta be, like, a weird situation, because, like, he's, he must have been, like, totally aware of all that, right? Yeah. So he was, like... He's completely aware of it. <laughs> in a push-up position, knowing that if he goes up or down, he's basically gonna die. You know how they got it out? How? The worst possible way you can imagine, but it's the only safe way to do it. Pull out the other end? No. They had to put the machine in reverse and slowly lift him out of it. <laughs> Good you God. Had, you ever have those boogers where you feel it in like the all the way up in your sinuses? Uh. Now, uh. imagine that, but instead of just your sinuses, it's your entire skull. <laughs> Man, uh, when the guy who got his, like, that steel thing, like, up lodged up here, it was weird because I remember reading that, like, he got up and just kind of, like, walked. <laughs> so just, like, imagine just, like, having that thing in your head. You can't really think too much about it, otherwise you're going to freak out. So you just, like, right. walk. And it's like, hey, I got to I gotta go. <laughs> and they're like... <laughs> I, think, I think one of the best and worst cases I've ever heard of something like that was, a. Uh, it was on a Halloween the worst possible time for you to be impaled by anything. The I think the guy was... Um, I think they were doing, like, yard work or something. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the blade from the axe slipped off. And I guess it impaled itself in his face. And he was perfectly fine. He, he was coherent. He was whatever. He had to drive to the hospital and tell them, Yeah, I kind of took an axe to the face. And no one believed it because it's a Halloween. They're like, right. oh, it's a good like, So they just kind of like bypass the thing that something else was wrong until they noticed that he was making a really big mess on the floor. And they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they eventually rushed him rushed him into the ER to like fix his, fix his, his, his slight bifurcating problem. Right. Man, that's got to be the worst. Oh, yeah. Before I forget, like, I think... I think my ideal, like, costume for Halloween would be, like, being the Headless Horseman 
Which, like, he would just kind of cover my entire face. like The headless like, horseman before he became headless. <laughs> oh, well, I was thinking about, like, something really cool where, like, I'd put, like, something, like, covering my face. Like, it'd be, like, nighttime, so I'd probably wear something black over my face. Vanta black. Right. And i just have a pumpkin that actually have, like, some kind of um, walkie-talkie attached to it. And I'll be able to talk to it so people could just carry my head around. And I'd be speaking through it. <laughs> but I'd also be riding a horse, and that's the best part about it. Yeah. <laughs> It's not, it's, it's, you're, you're just a headless guy without the horse. So here I am, just like, I'd be walking, I wouldn't really say too much, but then you could also hear my voice, like, from Pumpkin's head, that someone could be carrying around. I think, um, I think a cool thing that I really want to happen is go to a Harry Potter costume party and go as the best thing that I can think of. Some from Star Trek. No. <laughs> the greatest costume idea that I can think of for a, for a oh, Hogwarts yeah, Halloween else. party. Would be an incomplete set of the uh, Weasley twins. So bad. <laughs> I think any Harry Potter event that I'm ever invited to, I'm gonna go wearing a a very sad looking homemade sweater with a G on it, and that's it. Everyone's gonna be looking for the F. It's like what? what and you're like, <laughs> and then <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna bring like a bottle of fake tears. Anyway, if anyone ever brings up where's Fred, I'm just... and just go catatonic for a minute. <laughs> so, oh shit, I'm sorry. And meanwhile, I kind of pitched in that I'd be like, I I jo- join you as Hedwig with some kind of like poster board that says like our service no longer available or out of order. <laughs> so bad. But oh uh, yeah. Uh, also, forget before I forget. Um, after we did the um, Merrick Lakey collaboration, mm-hmm. uh, Dave and I decided to go to uh, that one plaza where Har- plaza. Yeah, Har- Har- Harkins. Uh, Mount uh, Grove. Uh, yeah, af- across from Harkins, you, you see Farm Boys, and right yes. next to it is uh, JoJo's uh, Gorilla Dog. We went there, and um, it's so good. It's good. It's so good. But that pricing, though, that's why I'm like. Ooh, because it's like like what I got was um like one of their signatures make it a combo so I had like their macaroni salad and I decided to get an order of like their um their funnel cake fries mm-hmm. with like um I guess it only matter came to like, like thirteen dollars came to like fifteen dollars uh, I was like ooh well the combo itself adds like three four dollars to yeah the thing. and the hot dog is like seven dollars was it really yeah mine was seven dollars for sure Damn, it's like five it's a uh, it's Five ninety nine if you make your own. Oh really? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. I'll keep in mind that. Like it's base five ninety nine unless you like add like their signature toppings. Really? I could have sworn yeah, like, like a handful of cents each one. Yeah, I was. I could have sworn like I saw like the topping have their own individual pricing. So yeah, they have a. Uh, they have uh, you choose the kind of dog you want. The I think you choose the bun. Mm-hmm. I, no, you don't choose the bun. Um, then you choose the toppings, and they have like the signature toppings. I could have sworn you, you were able to pick your own bun. Well, I think vegan's the only thing. Yeah. Yeah. You have so, your vegan and gluten free. Right, okay. Um, otherwise, like, it's definitely good. I, I like the toppings, especially. I genuinely don't mind paying that price because you have to figure out the Harkins, the hot dogs are pretty much the same price there. Oh, yeah. Five. They're five, five seventy five, I think, for their Angus dog. Oh, okay. Like. Or, Five fifty for the Angus dog, four seventy five for the regular hot dog. I mean, I guess like the price is definitely justifiable with like all the different toppings that they add in there, and like how, who knows how much work is put into like creating those things. Mm. And maybe it's just me, like because I I would love to go there more often, but it is like pri- a little bit pricey on my side to like go there like as often as I'd want to. Honestly, if you just get a dog and a drink, it's really not that much. You want to get the funnel cake fries and a whole Right, combo. I want to like, get a full experience. Yeah, like an entire meal. Yeah. But yeah, David was talking to me about like how there was these uh, Costco uh, hot dogs that were just as good for like a dollar or something like that and then with a drink. And I was like, what? So I got to try that. I've had Costco hot dogs. Yeah? They taste like hot dogs. Yeah, like the Polish dogs. See, the problem with you guys is... When you guys go to these places, you're like, I'm going to have a hot dog. Get a hot dog at a place like that. Get like a Bratwurst or a Frankfurter. Get a gourmet hot dog. Don't get don't go with your standard uh, ballpark Franks. <laughs> right. It definitely, 
there was a lot of familiarity once you got once you were able to separate from like all the toppings it's like oh this is a hot dog but definitely the toppings make it like completely different and I I definitely like enjoyed my hot dog per se mm-hmm. I think David went, went with something too sweet like their secret sauce was just like something that was like not for his particular oh, uh, I liked like, it yeah the, what was it the mojo sauce yeah yeah I didn't have that I had their sp- spicy buffalo one mm-hmm. which is pretty cool I like that one uh, and I do appreciate their funnel cakes being like like their funnel cakes except not as hard to pick out <laughs> So, it's definitely edible, and I really like that. So, and yeah, like, the whole work environment, despite how small the space is, yeah. it does utilize it to its full extent with, like, the outdoor tables. And it's, like, a nice, like, table against the wall where you can, like, plug in your phone or work on your laptop and stuff like that. So, it's definitely friendly there. And I did like um, the people who were working there. They were, like, really nice. Mm-hmm. Had, like, a lot of energy to them, considering it was, like, like what, 9 o'clock at night? It's really not that f- bad. I guess on a Friday, yeah. They were pretty busy, too. Like, ooh. Yeah, they a lot of those places get a lot of business on Friday nights because of the theater. True, yeah, that's right, okay. Like, they get impossible business. It definitely helps, like, how there's all these, like, different, like, restaurants, like, opened up nearby. Mm-hmm. So they are able to work off of, like, Harkins or just, like, other, like, the shopping centers over there. So mm-hmm. that's cool. But, yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd say I'd recommend... The hot dog place for sure. It's just maybe not as often. Maybe like it's like a once a week type treat. Certainly, or even once a month if you're like really budgeting. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, like you can go with it now too. <laughs> it's like, hey, I'm, I'm over here. Well, what's it called? Uh, double double combo is pretty much just as much as a. Uh, is it? As a dog and a drink. Dog to drink. I don't know. I just like. I like more for the less. As uh, stubborn as I am. Just like, I don't like thinking, I don't really get the double double anymore. I just go with the regular uh, cheese, um, cheeseburger. Do you really? Cheeseburger, fries, drinks. Because I'm like, I don't really need that much. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm just so used to, like, right. gorging when right. I'm saying. Yeah. I no longer have that luxury as an adult <laughs> who doesn't lose more weight. <laughs> So yeah, actually, Dave and I, are, uh, right before we start filming on Sunday, we're gonna try to do a running thing. How are you? Yeah, in the in the early morning. It's gonna be an adventure. So, what are you guys gonna film on Sunday? We're gonna try to film a skit, definitely. Uh, not entirely sure, like what we do for Daniel Plays now that we're done with Sonic. Uh-huh. Um, we have Kingdom Hearts to fall back on because I think he has the games and PS2. And- I have the capture for that. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, we're going to try to work on a skit that we've been thinking about ever since the last time we were, uh, I, was at his, I was at his house. We were playing uh, Clash of Ninja 2, uh, Naruto, uh. for the GameCube. And he was just kind of like busting through story mode after we had done like just like a, a one-time recording for the game. Uh-huh. And uh, he got to the Lee vs. Gara fight in the tuning exams. And for the love of God, he could not finish fighting Gara. Uh, I think a funny thing is like, hey, David, we're, I'm not going to leave until you finish the story mode. And he's like, oh, wait, I got it. <laughs> Starts losing <laughs> against Gara. I was like, David, I can't go home until you finish this game. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to film something along those lines? So I'm like, David, please. He's like, no, no, this is your house now, your family now. <laughs> You gotta work here. Now go to bed. Go to your, your room. You gotta earn your keep. Take out the take out the trash. Pick up the, after the dogs. Like, oh, can I kind of go home to just get my work clothes? No. <laughs> but yeah, so was, uh, he kind of had you in a bit of an indentured servitude, like in uh, Animal Crossing, something like that. Yeah. But Nook, it's like you you gotta pay for all this. You gotta earn your keep. <laughs> oh man, you paid off your house. Cool. I already took the luxury of upgrading it, so your bill comes to one point four seven million dollars. Oh, you don't have that. Well, I guess you can start working for me. I mean, you just have to pay it off <laughs> with a little bit of labor. Oh, oh boy. I mean, if you don't, I mean, we might have some problems. I mean, I'm I'm not saying I'll do anything, but I don't know about the contractors over there. They worked really hard through the night. It was like an express deal. You have any idea how hard it is to turn a one-story, two-bedroom 
into a five-story, 27-bedroom, 16-bath with a swimming pool and basketball court overnight? It's a lot of work. These guys work really hard, and I don't know if they'd appreciate you not paying them for their work. I'm just going to take note of like all the things you're doing wrong here. Well, what city did you say you were going to want to stay in? Yeah, I don't see you there. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. Huh, let me see. Yeah, that one's full. Oh, you want to try Sweet B? Yeah, it's full. No, that one's full too. You know what? You get uh, the boiler room in winter. <laughs> So that's a nice little open yard there. Oh, I'm sorry. That's actually taken, by the way. <laughs> taken, taken by someone else who has to also pay for his, for his house. Good God, Nook. Is he actually in the new 3DS Animal Crossing, actually? I don't know. So, oh, okay. I'll have to ask, like, Nolan, for example. I'm not a guy who ever played Animal Crossing. Yeah. Like, I tried to... I, like, I played the DS version of it. I could never really get into it. Like, I'd start off strong, but, like, over time, like, what am I doing? <laughs> Where did my life go wrong? I even went back, like, months later, and Village was like, Where'd you go? Where'd you go, go inside? Look at this place! Look See, at all these ladies you have to sweep! Look at all these, like, weeds you have to pull out. Like, oh my god, what happened? It's like, no one in that, no one in that community is capable Gotta give it to them. Like, they actually make it a world that you have to constantly go back to in order to maintain it. Otherwise, this it goes to ruin. But yeah, uh, we definitely should, like, arrange, like, a Tomb Raider Let's Play. I mm -hmm. just gotta get your guys' schedule down. I work. Always. I'm at work right now. Well, it's a shame. I'm gonna have to mark that down. <laughs> at least you're earning your keep. <laughs> Um, one thing I want to talk about, uh, it was like a year ago that, uh, I finished the Naruto manga. Are you right? And now, a year later, the right. anime's coming to a close. You're right. And I don't know how I feel about that. Because it's... Naruto was like the first anime I really got into. Like, yes, I watched Dragon Ball Z growing up, but mm -hmm. to me, that really wasn't like, it didn't, feel... It, it didn't feel like a... Typical anime, it was, uh... It was just like, beat him up, and you're like, yeah! Yeah. And this was, like, much more, like, developmental, I would say. Mm -hmm. This one had, like, way more character development, way more story. It was more than, oh, this guy's strong, he's gonna blow up the... He's gonna kill the Earth. Whether it's, like, I'm gonna kill the Earth because I kill the universe or the galaxy. In, in the long run, it's, I'm gonna kill the Earth. And so this one was, like, a way different. It really felt like a, a TV drama, a soap opera, a telenovela, something like that, mm -hmm. where the characters actually have real-life drama going on. There's problems with... And since they're, like, my age at the time, mm -hmm. like what? They were 16, like... Or 13 at the time when it first started. Right. I think 12, at least. 12, 13, something around there. So it started off with me being, like, Nine, ten, something like that. I watched it when it uh, when it came out on Toonami. Right, same here. Yeah, so um, I really got into it. Like, it really hit something because he was worried about girls and that one guy who just always having to be better at him with everything and trying to find his place in the world. Mm -hmm. And so it really struck with me, and I got really, really into it. Mm -hmm. Um. I was one of those kids where when no one was watching, I would run like that, or I'd be doing hand signs trying to mimic it and whatnot. I know. Yeah. I'm pretty sure every kid at the time who got, who like watched Naruto and got into it did that in the safety of their room where no one could see. <laughs> but, um, I think once I like got into middle school and I started seeing other kids like running like that, I'm like, God, that's so weird and embarrassing so I kind of stopped watching it for a while mm -hmm. and then I got back into it in high school but uh I don't know this so last strange. episode it really got to me it was like what 477 or 377 yeah 477 sir yeah so episode 477 uh there's a talk between Naruto and Aruka sensei where he was talking oh about how God. <laughs> if it weren't for the words that he said um to the guy who was trying to destroy the Leaf Village. Right. If it weren't for that, 
he thinks he would have Never. gone an entirely different path. He would have resented the village and wanted to destroy it. Pretty much gone wild and surrendered himself to the Nine Tails. And it was showing the flashback of the first episode, and I was like, "Damn, it's really coming to an end." After all these years, after me really getting into it, me connecting with the characters on a real like personal level, because it really it stuck with me. It mimicked a lot of the troubles that I was going through at the time, and so knowing that it's going to be over is both satisfying and also sad. Really, it's so sad, like when like series like that happen because like it it's the initial like interest, and then it starts to build. You find like connections with these different characters, like whatever the reasons are, and then it comes to a close. Especially when Naruto like goes back to like the very first episode. Like I see like. Naruto, it's been, like, going on for so damn long that, like, I kind of, like, I'm not too excited about the series anymore, but, like, when it came to that part in the anime episode, it's like, it brought me back to the roots of, like, how it all started. When and it was I, all new to you. Yeah. And, like, that, what Yuruka sensei said it was still a very touching sentiment, and, like, it definitely showed. And it uh, showed throughout the entire series that Naruto yeah. took that to heart because... He eventually started saying that with everyone and everything. He's like, I'm not going to let you hurt them. They're my friend. We're shinobi together. Mm -hmm. And, like, I definitely got that feeling that you just had with, like, the manga. Because, like, it was definitely that part where I was like, it's over. It's mm -hmm. over. And now seeing it again, it's like, yeah, like, what can I do now? But I guess, like, with the anime, it can, like, now branch off into, like, the different, like, adaptations, like, the different works that's been involved, like Shikamaru's story, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of Sasuke, like when he just left and stuff like that. That's one thing that I really love about um, watching an anime as opposed to reading the manga, because the manga, it's a very clear, concise story. It's like reading a book. Right. You're going to get from A to B, and that's how it's going to be. With the sh with the, um, anime, though, they have to kind of, they can burn through like three, four chapters in an episode. But with that, they have to kind of, like, slow down and take a step back, let the manga Catch get, a get ahead of them. Right. That way they can show an entire arc or an entire season, depending on how you want to look at it. So they throw in filler, which gives bonus stories that you're not going to get in the manga. Yeah. And so you get to see things like, well, this side character happened up doing this, and it affected... Team 7 like this because the person that they met in this episode that was part of the main story this was their backstory and their whole motivation and why they needed their help mm -hmm. I definitely had like a, a bad impression on the filler that happened like in the middle of like the Shinobi War but now that we've cleared that we've cleared through the main plot and now it's just like well like we already know what the destination is but there's a lot of stuff that's like in the middle Mm -hmm. that we've never seen before. And I guess, like, that's why I was, like... I was also very accepting of, like, the Naruto filler after Naruto versus Sasuke, the very first one. Where it's like, okay, what happens, like, before Naruto leaves the village to train with Jiraiya? Like, all, all these different episodes. Like, a whole hundred episodes yeah, worth of filler. It's, it's that or what is everyone doing while Naruto's training with Jiraiya? That too, yeah. Like, um... Uh, after Pain destroyed the village and they're rebuilding it? Mm-hmm good time for the filler because it's like what's everyone else doing as the village is being rebuilt there's a lot of downtime right now mm -hmm. um one one set of filler that I really liked was uh after the infinite Sugiyomi took effect mm -hmm. it showed everyone's dream world well a good number of everyone's dream world and I thought that's really cool to do that's cool it like, took a break from the action and kind of cut in the middle of it but certainly but like there was no other better place to Put yeah, like it was a good place to put it. It happened. They did it, and then they started showing everyone's dream. I particularly like uh, uh, Kiba's dream specifically. Oh, where he, he he's, like, he's the Hokage and everyone gets a dog. Yeah. <laughs> Whose dream was it? Where everything was flipped. Everything was flipped? Yeah, where... It was Tsunade's dream, I think. Where... That, that full arc that could have been its own, like... Spin off like the what if? Yeah, where uh, Sasuke was a was a horn dog, 
And what? so is he not to... A horn dog? Yeah. Oh, um, was, a person, different personalities and stuff yeah. like that? Oh. Ooh, that's a tough one. Because I can't they, remember whose that was. I forget, but... but yeah, like, Hinata was a whore. Sakura was... I think it's Ten-Ten, actually. It might have been Ten-Ten, huh? Yeah. But yeah, it was kind of weird. It was Ten-Tens. Yeah. It was... It was weird, like, how they placed it, and it just kind of broke the flow of the the war, but there was no other place to put it. It was just, like, during, like, the middle where, like, they're fighting uh, Madara, like, the the core Team 7. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I think well, it was, like, actually, it was, but it wasn't. Hmm. Because you have to figure, they were in their little bubble, they were in the, um, the Susano bubble thinking up a plan. Right, I, I, I get so that. So there point. was a break in the action, regardless whether they had that or not. There had been like two episodes in like, what do we do? How are we going to fix this? Don't look at the sun. <laughs> oh, I was talking about uh, like stuff like uh, Hagoromo, like the Sixth and Sage of Six Path, like telling this in depth story mm. about the whole thing. Like, I get why they oh, want yeah. to do that. But it's like, it. Mm, oh, mm, you're talking about um, a- like after. Uh, the origin story. Like, yeah. The, the origin story. After. um... Kaguya took control. Yeah. And, and they then, were fighting and then he's right there. I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, guys, my, like, what do my we do? Chitlins. <laughs> Agro was like, let me tell you a story. And like, we have no other choice. <laughs> same with like, oh, Hashi. can't be helped. It's kind of the same with Hashi. I was like, oh, okay, where do I begin, Sasuke? Mm, let's talk about how Madara and I met. <laughs> it's like, oh, here we go. I mean, it had to happen. It had to happen. But had now, we're at that point where, like, the anime is pretty much over. The only thing that's been covered in the manga was, uh, that was still part of the Naruto thing, not just Borto. Honestly, at just this like, point, the only thing that they have to show, they've already shown a whole bunch of extra stuff. They didn't show the whole process of the arms being made. They didn't show Sasuke in prison. That'd be cool. Um, it was, um, it was, they finished their fight. It showed the two finger thing. Right. And then it skipped forward, like, six years. Right. Well, like, not even six years. It's like twenty years. They skip forward because Naruto is the seventh. Mm-hmm. Um, Boruto is, is already grown in in Naruto's the Ninja age. Academy. Yeah, he's twelve or something like that. Yeah. So like a lot of time has passed. Yeah, it skipped the, like fifteen, twenty years. Right. And so everything that happened after um, it showed them with their arms blown off is all it's like, anime it's all, exclusive. It's stuff. all free game. Yeah. So like. No, Dude, I totally get if they, that. If, if they do this right, if they do this right, we can get like another like six years out of the anime. They could. It's, and it's like, oh, we could skip and do a time skip, but here's what happened in between. I And I'm totally okay with that because like now like the story is over. So like, and like everything, technically everything it's, they show is, is now quote unquote canon. Yeah. Because it's like, well, the manga didn't really cover it, but at the same time, that's a time skip. So we have all this free content. So uh, what I've heard so far is that there's an, a boyhood arc, which is going to be like, just like uh, childhood stories from these different people like Naruto, Hinata, Shikamaru, um, Sakura even. Well, I think, I think Sasuke, Naruto, and Hinata all had their bases covered. Right. Like, there's no more that they can do that's not like, oh, well, we kind of... Figured that that might have happened. Uh, Who yeah. I want to see is like Kiba, Ino, Sakura. I want to see. Um, oh no! What? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! What? Shino. Okay, Shino. I I, I narrowed for a second and completely forgot his name. <laughs> I'm not that unrecognizable. <laughs> I'm still here, guys. Yeah. I'm still part of Team. Eight. <laughs> Team eight. Yeah. So I want to see like uh, Kiba's upbringing, Sakura, Ino. I want to see Shikamaru's. They've shown some of it. Like he played That's right. Like him playing a uh, a game of uh, Shoujo. Oh some, God! Something show something. Yeah. Right. Japanese che- chess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, we've seen him the, playing that a lot with his dad growing up, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot more to it than that. We've seen a good amount from Choji, like, in the past, like, mm-hmm. original Naruto, before Time Skip. Uh, just like him, just kind of being... Well, he wasn't, like, rejected as Naruto was, but, like, it was because of his weight that people, like, looked at him differently. 
Mm-hmm. So I think we pretty much covered his spaces there. I think like the episodes for the most part aren't like really meant to like build up the character, but just like kind of show an instance of something. Like mm-hmm. I think a synopsis of like Sasuke's story is that like, oh, uh, the parents are gone, so Sasuke and Itachi are like at the home by themselves. What do they do? So it'd be interesting to see their interaction because usually like when you see the pa- them in the past, it's usually them separate. Mm-hmm. They're doing their own thing. They're always showing them either trying to kill each other or it's always, sorry Sasuke, I have None to go time. do business. So what are they going to do now? Yeah, like what happens when they're alone together when it's like Itachi, fuck what you're going to do. We have to go get groceries. Watch your brother. It's like, <laughs> but mom, the Hanbu Black Ops needs me for this mission. I need you for this mission. <laughs> fuck your S rank. This is S S mom rank. S <laughs> S mom rank. It's like, Okay, Okasa. <laughs> it shows Sasuke like pooping his pants in the hallway. <laughs> like, I think that was a cool. I think that was a cool thing that they showed when uh, the Nine Tails attacked. Yeah, it showed uh, Itachi being the best older brother that he could be, carrying Sasuke running through the village as everything's just going to hell. Yeah, and the whole time Sasuke's turning like, no, I don't trip. Like, it's good. Everything would be fine. Everything. Well, and you, you know what it says? Shit, 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 shit. I like the moments uh, in that particular uh, arc where uh, that that girl who did like Itachi wanted to touch it like Sasuke. And Sasuke was like, no, no, no. It's like, no, stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Sasuke, don't trip. I, I think one of my favorite things about it was like the most adorable real to life shit ever with Itachi mm. and that was when she offered him the dumplings right there oh I'll be fine and she starts eating and just <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I think we're pretty much good here we actually spent a lot of time yeah not bad not bad uh, just... one thing I want to bring up mm. It really touched my heart in that episode mm. when he did the thing to Sakura. Yeah. Maybe next time. Yeah. I was like... Because thinking about it, that's... It's a really big moment. Right. It, sa- it, does, it says a lot more than... Initially. Not most, but some people would care to give it to. Because they're cause like, oh, he's doing the thing that Tachi did. It's that, but it's a lot more because... His brother was always gone. Growing up, he idolized his brother, Mm -hmm. right? And the way that he really got affection from his brother that we've seen was through the little tap of the forehead. That was the way that his brother showed that he loved him and still wanted to hang out with him, but he couldn't because business called. Mm -hmm. So him doing that is pretty much the Sasuke version of him telling Sakura that he loves her. That he's going to be there and he's going to come back and they're going to do stuff if he's able. Should like his like his one and only right hand comes through. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, definitely. Now that you like point that out, like yeah, like that's, like, that's how he that's and his brother his, showed affection. That is like essentially that's his only way to show affection. That's the only way he's learned really affection mm-hmm. beyond like his own parents and showing him like like attention and stuff like that. So and that, even then, it was always overshadowed by Itachi. Because right. his dad was the leader of the clan, and he had to make sure that their image was spot on. So he had to make sure that, since Itachi was a big influence, that he had to be on his ass all the time. Right. And the mom's just, you know, cool mom. Yeah. But, you know, like, she has other things to do as well. So it was really was Itachi who, like, kind of showed him, like, I guess to really kind of learn to be a person. Mm-hmm. Sounds crazy when you think about it. It's really heartbreaking. Yeah. Especially, like, when you know, like, Itachi's background, like, his philosophy and everything as he was growing up. And, like, how Itachi, you know, how Sasuke, it was just, like, a little window of that. Like, a little portion of that mm-hmm. that he would tend to. Where his his uh, list of things that go above all else, it went the clan, the village, and then Sasuke. Mm-hmm. Where he'd do anything for his clan, but if the village said, nah, fam, he'd get rid of his clan like he did. Right. But... He would destroy the entire village before they made him destroy his little brother. Mm-hmm. Which he would have had they not said, we'll, you'll spare him 
and we'll take care of him. Do this for us, though. Yeah. Man. It really just... It really is kind of sad how the series is ending. Even though, like, everything's kind of meant to end at some point. And then, like, you... Sure, like, maybe a season will end, and you're like, okay, we'll just have some downtime before the next season. There is no next season. Boy! (laughs) And you're like, oh! (laughs) No! It's... I don't know, it's... It's like tough. I said, it's bittersweet. It's nice to see that his adventures, his adventure is coming to an end. That everything is finally coming full circle, and he's getting what he wanted. Mm-hmm. That everything went good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it ended nine. It ended ninety percent okay. Right. Like it better than it what it could have been. <laughs> yeah. It ended ninety percent okay, but. There is no more adventure. Yeah. And so it's like, wow. What now? It's like... There's definitely going to be a, be a... Like an emptiness. Right, to it's me like... Now. Hey, Naruto, I gotta hand you. There was a pretty clean cut ending you got here, but... Sorry about the arm. <laughs> it's like... I think... Uh, gee, thanks. Oh, that was actually a good thing that I saw in the animation <laughs> the for... Good, his, thanks. For his, what's it called? Was after, like, when the five Kage came Mm -hmm. to, like, tell him what's up. Mm -hmm. And it showed him in his, like, I guess medical garb. Yeah. He would be like this, and you'd see his his (laughs) lab coat just, like, dangle where his elbow would be. And it's just like, well, you know. I mean, like, arm's gone, but, you know, I mean, could have been worse. Yeah, you see see that his arm is gone by the way that his coat doesn't continue an arm. It's funny. (laughs) It just goes down. Rock Hockey is like, I know how you feel, dude. <laughs> and he's like, oh, well. <laughs> oh, <this is> sad. <laughs> Here, let's just, like, let's just do the peace one. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of cool how, like, the Rock Hockey acknowledged Naruto after all that. Because mm-hmm. initially he was like, no, fam. Killing, cause I'm killing Sasuke. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I think we're good. <laughs> that big cock tease from Kakashi is right there. <laughs> as a as a six oh, Kage, Naruto, I, I grant you status. I grant you. Um, I I promote you to Jonin level. <laughs> sh- Leaf Shinobi. You're like, oh, but is what I'd like to say. Oh, <laughs> it was. It made sense. But you got homework, fam. <laughs> you got study, fam. He's like, no! He like how he like jumps into the window like, good God, with his still like dangling arm. Yeah, he's banging on it with his with his droopy arm. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how that's going to work. I really would like to see that process too. Him like becoming tuning then joning. It's pretty much just finish reading all this and you have your status. I guess so. But you'd have to take exams and you'd probably have to partake in the... He said he'd have to take exam. Would you want to fight him? True enough. <laughs> Would you want to fight him? I mean, sure, he has got one arm, but he's pretty much like baby Jesus. <laughs> he's like, okay. He did come back from the dead. Yeah. And he can fly. And he's yeah. got like six orbs that will pretty much destroy you. <laughs> he only has, what, four, I think? No, he's got more than four. Like, maybe five. I swear he only had like three or four true seeker orbs. Because mm. he wasn't quite at the level of... uh the Sage of the Six Paths. Okay. It's, a uh, Naruto Uzumaki. I, the Six Hokage, hereby grant you the rank Jonin of the village hidden in the leaves. Is what I'd like to tell you. But there's something you must complete before that. The education materials you'll be needing. True Dude, enough. look at all them fucking books. I mean... <laughs> And I think the biggest punch in the dick was when was when freaking Ruka was like, "Come on, Naruto, you keep this pace. You'll have it in two years. Two years. It's <laughs> a long time. That's the time that he spent training with Jiraiya. Shit. <laughs> in book form. Oh. Well, I mean, he's gotta learn about this kind of stuff. Like, he's got the power. He just doesn't really have like I got the power. The knowledge. But yeah. <sighs> Oh yeah. Okay, we're seriously good on time here. Are we? Yeah, we sure. are. Well, we're, we're only fifty minutes in, though. I mean, it's a might as well been a live stream. It's a might might as well make it an hour. What do you want to talk about then? We can. <laughs> Hold on, I want to see how we're good on time here. 
Oh, we've got 15 minutes for this memory card. Oh, that's plenty of time. We could talk until the bat- the memory card dies. We could. I mean, what do you want to talk about? Sam? Oh, man. What else is there to talk about? Who? Uh, I, be- I started playing Fallout. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were doing that in the live stream, too. Like, like right before you came in. Yeah. Because you were- I was uh, killing the death claw. Right. And two things. One... Survival mode is awesome and a bitch at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I can pretty much one shot any human character in the game if I'm, yeah. if I'm stealthed out. Like, if I get the sneak bonus, I can one shot almost anybody with the, uh, with just a pipe pistol. Is that like part of the difficulty? Yeah, it's part of the difficulty because the whole point behind survival is, it's not like all other like difficulties where it's like you have easy, well, very easy, easy, normal, hard, and very hard. Mm-hmm. For Fallout, it has those five settings. Where it's like, oh, it's very hard. Well, we're going to hit you with the band hammer, and here's a marshmallow shooter. It's not like that. It's, all right, so you have a shotgun. They got a shotgun. They got a shotgun. Whoever pulls the trigger first is turning the other person into red mist. So it's essentially like, like realistic mode. Essentially. Yeah, it, it says um, enemies do more damage to you, but you return the favor. Right. So while, while monitoring your water intake, your food intake, your sleeping, um, you can get sick. Like you can just be going about and like, Ugh, I got a bacterial infection right now. It's going to affect my stamina regeneration and my stats hmm. unless I get some antibiotics. No, well, okay. That makes sense. It really is. That's, that's better, I yeah. would say. Instead of like, kind of like Halo, like where you have like legendary mode where like you'll deal, you, you'll where, pretty much waste the entire round on just elite armor before you even get to the skin. Yeah. It's just yeah. Like, God. And then the time it takes you to reload, their armor already came back. And they already shot you like six times and you're dead. <laughs> they, they looked at you funny and you died. <laughs> Which I'm pretty sure if you played the game on very hard, that's exactly what it would be like. Right. But, but survival, survival is, is... It balances everything. Everything's super balanced to where, yes, they will kill you in a shot if they sneak up on you and blast and hit you with a 10 millimeter handgun mm-hmm. to the head. Right. You're going to die. Your head will implode and you're dead. Mm-hmm. But if you do the same thing to them, they're dead. Okay. How about, um, how do the, I guess the mutants, as they, far as damage? They all take, like, severe amounts of damage, like, way more than you'd expect with the amount of damage that you take. Where with the, um, Yagoi, the bears. Oh, okay. Where when they swipe you, you're dead instantly. Right. You figure if you're playing a difficulty where if an enemy hits you and kills you in one hit, you're going to have to dump every casing that you have into them, right? Mm-hmm. It's more, all right, I got this 12 gauge. I'm going to shoot you in the face like six times and then cook you. Makes you have to figure these are mutated bears. They're going to take a lot yeah. more than a single 12 gauge. Well, death claws and anything above that, is that... The death claw that I fought? Mm-hmm. Not that hard to kill. Okay. Like, it still took a lot of a lot of rounds out of the minigun. Mm-hmm. But it didn't take every bullet I had. I used right. about a third of all of them. I think okay. I put, I think you're given like 1300 rounds. Okay. That first one you get because it's 800 plus 500. Okay. So you have the 1300 rounds. I think I used about 600, six, 700 mm-hmm. rounds on it. Mm-hmm. And that's because I kept missing a lot. Oh, uh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I'll just think about like bigger enemies. Like, I don't know if you've seen Swan yet. I haven't. Okay. Like, I've gone almost nowhere. I haven't even gone to Diamond City yet. Oh, shit. <laughs> because you can only save when you sleep. Good God. There's no auto save. There's no save on sleep. No, Well, no save on rest, travel, anything like that. It's You can only save when you find a mat, at the very least, a sleeping bag to rest your head on. All right, all right, all right. So that's the only way you can save. And there's no fast travel. Good God. All right, well. <laughs> it said if you want to get somewhere, you have to do it the old-fashioned way. Okay. <laughs> well, all right. 
Yeah, that's, that seems pretty reasonable. Oh. It's its own like type of difficulty. And then you have to worry about your water intake. Right. You have the dirty water and then purified water. Would, I mean, you can make your own purified water, right? It takes uh, three things of dirty water. It takes three things of dirty water to make it. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have three things of dirty water and then find a cooking station. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. It makes and, you really yeah. value clean water. And the thing is, it would be a lot easier if it weren't for the fact that as soon as you fill a, a bottle, like an empty Nuka Cola bottle, empty beer bottle, or anything like that, that bottle's gone. It is now dirty water or purified water. If you have th- three dirty water and you turn it into one purified water, guess what? You magically turn three bottles into one. All right. And so the best thing that you could possibly do in that situation is uh, when you start building your settlements, mm-hmm. always have a water spigot, the hand crank one. Right. Because you can put purified water into that. Okay. Okay. I always wonder, like, why I would always pick up, like, empty bottles, mm-hmm. even though they are, like, you would expect the seal in there, but why would I want to pick them up? But I guess, yeah, if you just refill it all the time. Yeah. So, Makes sense. you have to fill them up with water, cook the water. Another cool thing is, um, if you make an excess amount of water at your, what's it called? Your settlement? So, say you have six, six settlers, and you're making 15 water. You will, at the end of every day, get nine water at the workstation. Like, nine purified water well, in Well, they say they get the math in there. Yeah. Yeah. I I know I made my own separate file after we'd done the whole Smegdorf thing. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was playing on one of the higher difficulties, and uh, slowly but surely, I've been going through the things, particularly with the, um, the time, you know, mm-hmm. those guys, just kind of working on their mission specifically. Yeah. Because trying to figure out, like... Okay, what would I personally want to do, like, if I was in this situation? But it'd be interesting to do more of a survival mode type of deal. But these guys, like, they do hit harder because I have it on a higher difficulty setting. Here's the, here's the thing. When it comes to games like Fallout or an RPG game, there's no point in playing on the super hard difficulties. Mm-hmm. It's either you play on normal or a realistic mode. No. Because on normal, everything's how it should be. Mm-hmm. It's no, they do plus 50 damage and you do minus 50. Or vice versa, if you go into an easier difficulty. it's mm-hmm. You get no bonuses of any sort to your damage, your health, anything like that. It's You have your stats and that's it. Yeah. It, yeah it, Otherwise, you're handicapping yourself or handicapping the enemy. In other words, don't play any hard difficulties on Fire Emblem. Just go normal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Good another, God. Uh, another game like that is Civilization. If you play on anything higher than Prince, I think it is. If you play on Prince, there's no bonuses. Okay. If you go on something like Deity, it's enemies, it's other civilizations get like plus 200 research time, plus what? 200 build time, plus 200 uh, unit production time. It's, they get stupid bonuses to where it's like, well, they get six turns for every one that I get. Yeah, it's really unfair, but, like, I guess that's, like, a challenge that people like to take in which they... Well, yeah, there's the challenge behind it, but if you're trying to play play a game and have it balanced and get a real good experience out of it and play it how it's meant to be, most RPG games and strategy games, and for the most part, almost any game, it's like, you have to play it on standard difficulty, otherwise it's like, what? Yeah. The only other game that I can think of that, um, it's better on the harder difficulties is like Call of Duty and, uh, Battlefield. Yeah. Because Because on those, when you play it on veteran, it's, you take two shots, you're dead. Your enemy takes two shots, they're dead. Yeah. 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 Because like, it balances like the difficulty with, among all the different like, game mechanics. So Mm -hmm. it's not just, it's not just like a, Everyone gets all this, and you just get smitten. <laughs> yeah. One thing that's entire bullshit is uh, realistic on Call of Duty. It's the most bullshit game mode ever. Mm-hmm. It's, oh, that guy's an RPG. I think I'm going to snipe him. He fires an RPG, and uh, in Battlefield or Black Ops 3, it shows you like where, you're, where you've been hitting all that, mm-hmm. like as you're being shot. Every single time you die, no matter what weapon they're using, it's a headshot. 
<laughs> like the only thing glowing on your character that shows that you're that you've been damaged is the head. That guy has a shotgun. Boom, headshot. That guy has an LMG and he's blind firing over a corner. Boom, headshot. It's if you are hit, you're dead. And it's because it's a headshot. It's not. Oh, I got hit in the leg. This really hurts. No, it's I'm always. Gonna, I'm gonna sit down and wait for this to feel a little better, which is kind of the mindset that I trick myself into to kind of give a suspension of disbelief hmm. on veteran where it's like, oh, I'm going to sit behind this wall and my health is going to come back. Because, hmm. yeah, that's entire bullshit. Mm-hmm. You can't sit behind a wall and be perfectly fine. Yeah. But uh, that's way more realistic than this guy threw a grenade and exploded headshot. <laughs> right? It, like, it didn't even land on the ground. It detonated exactly when it would touch your head. Boom. Headshot. <laughs> like, you'd see it on the floor. You could put your foot on it. It blows up. Boom. Headshot. My foot is here. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> boom. Bam. Well, like, I see the signs of, like, no. The sands are... Body is totally fine, but where'd the head? <laughs> yeah. You see, if you if you pay attention to this corpse, the foot is clearly over the detonation site. Studying the the brutalities of war, like oh, what happened to the head? Everything else is fine. Yeah, I guess I guess everyone is Sasuke in it because they have flame control, right? <laughs> All right. We're pretty good here. Yeah, we're... Man, that was like... That's a long conversation for just two people. I miss these. Me too. Right yeah. the good old days when we'd have like almost two-hour podcasts. Yeah, we would. Just you and I. But for... what? Why would we do that, though? Mm, I don't know. We just kept talking until we ran out of things to talk about. I guess so. But yeah, I guess... I don't know. I think we could also do that. I think it's more dynamic when you have, like, one person that you're focusing on. Otherwise, like, you always want to wait for other people's response. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that, like, like definitely, like, when I want to say something, like, maybe the other person, most likely another person in the conversation, like, jumps in, says something, and I'm like, oh, well, I guess I can't really, can't really say anything here because it wouldn't really apply during this particular moment in the conversation. I think I said this, like, in our early days, that uh, I think the optimal number... For us, would be like three people in a podcast. Yeah, yeah, that'd work. That way, it's you have the conversation, the conversation element that two people would have, but you also have a third person to kind of give an unbiased opinion. In sure. Whatever. So, if two people are having a conversation, the person can kind of give their say on the matter. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, before this camcorder dies and abruptly cuts our visuals. Uh, let's end here because we actually gone through a good hour here. Oh man, that was quite a conversation after everything that's happened today. But yeah, it feels good too. Like it, I do, I do miss and miss these, especially if I don't have to edit it too much. Right? <laughs> yeah. What I'm tripping out on is we're fast pro. We're like already halfway there to our third year. Third year. Of the pot on the podcast, yeah. Wow, yeah, you're right. Are we? Are we? Uh, it would be one fifty six. That would be three years. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it it'd wasn't be, like it'd be one fifty six because there's fifty two weeks in a year. We've done one every week. Of course, we've missed a few weeks, so well, it would okay. technically be a lot less than that. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You're for right. the most part, we're supposed to release these weekly so we're going off of 52 weeks okay so it'd be 156 and that's crazy fastly approaching now that's, one two three that's genuinely insane man it's crazy how like and you want to like look back especially like how you were before i watched uh episode six not that long ago yeah that was the e3 talk oh <laughs> yeah i don't know no one will ever know. I don't even remember it. I remember. Steffi kind of remembers it. I remember it. I'm pretty sure if I bring up jelly beans to her, she'll know. Yeah, she's like. <laughs> and I'm like, did you say reaction? <laughs> and she has the same expression, like, Ugh. jelly beans. So you said we had 15 minutes. We're fast approaching that okay. like minute mark. All right, so uh, we're just getting here. So thank you guys so much for watching episode 123 of Dang Podcast. My name is Justin. I'm Gabe. 
And thanks for watching. Hashtag bye. I got this. <laughs>